Oh, <laughs> hello, computer cooks. I wondered who you were then. Uh, welcome to a rather enhanced Retro Recipes kitchen. Yes, thanks to my Patreons, I was able to add another table to the setup, so I don't have to hold things on my lap anymore when I'm presenting my intros for Retro Recipes. Or should I say, recipe pies? More specifically, apple pie. What? Uh, more specifically, apple and raspberry pie. Oh, I remember. This was uh, part of a job lot that I bought on Craigslist. I tried to get this Apple IIe working. I tried for hours. Um, just couldn't get a picture. And then I realised... It's got to be empty, isn't it? I think that would explain it. Well, Apple always encourages us to think different. Uh, like they did when they brought out the iBlend. So in keeping with that, I'm going to try to put a raspberry pie inside here. But as this is Retro Recipes Retro with a twist, I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to try and hook up the original mechanical keyboard to the raspberry pie. I'm going to try to hook up the original Apple IIe mono speaker, as well as joystick ports and some other little surprises. Speaking of surprises, do stay tuned because we've got a very special guest coming up at the end of the episode. If you like what you're about to see, please like and subscribe. Make sure you click that subscribe bell so you get notified of new episodes. And if you really like what you see, please consider checking out my Patreon. For now though, let's see if an apple a day really does keep the computer doctor away. The Apple IIe. All joking aside, this machine is special to me. It's the first computer my dad ever brought home, and me and my parents really bonded over the introduction to Apple IIe disc, even learning for the first time what the Enter key did. My favourite game to play with my mum was Frogger, and with my dad it was Blitzkrieg. And all of that's what really attracted me to this project. So the question is what to do with all this lovely empty space? Well, this is a Raspberry Pi Model B. I'll explain why I chose that model in a moment. But another thing I wanted to do was connect up this original mechanical keyboard. And if you look at the Raspberry Pi, it has these USB connections. So I hunted it down and finally found a dedicated retro connector keyboard adapter for the Apple IIe original keyboard. It runs an Arduino type device and should allow us to hook up the USB here to the USB of the Raspberry Pi. So I started by hot gluing the Raspberry Pi into the case. You could use various methods. I like hot glue because it ensures that there's no conductivity uh, short circuits, and it just makes it become one with the case, really uniting it. Now, all that processing power of the Apple IIe, things are going to get hot. So I'm attaching some heat sinks here, just to make sure we don't really have a baked apple pie. But we are going to need more than two USB connectors, so here I'm attaching a powered USB hub. I'll explain why later. I love the fact that I was able to find one that matched up perfectly with some of the devices we're actually going to be connecting to it, like these gamepads, but not the cassette. Can't win them all. So time to power the powered hub. Hate cables. Now I had tried an unpowered hub and ran into problems, hence the need for power. <clears throat> Sorry. And in goes the USB connection. Got a little more cable than I need in here, but I want to make things really tidy and make this whole thing feel cohesive. It goes in there. So 
And let's make this really secure so these never come out again. We don't want this to be an empty apple pie in the future. And then in goes that USB keyboard adapter. Just hope it works. And that can then connect by USB over to the remaining socket on the Raspberry Pi. And of course with USB, it's always the third way around that you try that works. <laughs> Time to dig out the original connector. So that's been lurking in there a long time and you can see how it fits perfectly into this modern device. Thumbs up, well, thumbs sideways. Now what's this, you ask? Well, I was on a bit of an Arduino roll. This is a Teensy Arduino clone gamepad adapter. This actually takes the original Apple IIe paddles and joystick and allow me to connect them to the USB and to the Raspberry Pi. I was even able to use the original bolts and put it in the original uh, RS-232 size socket here. Again, USB. Second way around this time. And now we have to use some of these multiple connections on the USB hub. I love how the HDMI output and the Ethernet socket are all accessible here from the original power outlet. What's well, come a long way in these five minutes. Isn't it incredible though how little space this still takes up? It really is a testament to how far technology has marched on. Now this video isn't really a tutorial of how to install RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi, but it will give you a brief rundown. You just download the appropriate image from the RetroPie website and you're going to have to burn that image to a SD card. So you find out the disk number, at least on the Mac. You have to unmount the disk so that it can be burned directly. Hope we don't burn our Pi. And then using the command line or the terminal in the Mac, we're going to issue the sudo command to write that image to the SD card. Wait five or 10 minutes. Hello. Ah, progress. So now back to the Retro Computing Museum. In goes our HDMI cable. We'll come to composite in a minute. And we turn it on and look at that. Don't you just love that? Because the original keyboard connector actually has power, the USB is powering the keyboard light, thus powering the Apple light. Ah. Well, in goes that SD card that we just burned. And we're going to need Ethernet too, so I'm going to borrow the one from the Amiga 500 email video that I did. If you didn't see that, check it out. That was quite a good project. And we just pop it in here to the Raspberry Pi. And instantly we get the flashing Ethernet lights or Ethernet, if you are American. Just like I am, mate. Turning it on, we get our first signs of life. Now it doesn't look too much like an Apple IIe at the moment. Give me time. First thing I want to do is expand the file system. This is gonna make sure that the whole of the SD card is usable for ROMs. I'm also going to enable SSH, which will enable me to transfer those ROMs using Cyberduck or another FTP style program. And finally, a bit of overclocking. Let's get high. And then we install the Apple IIe emulator itself, which is called LinApple, because of course the Raspberry Pi runs Linux. And the thing I love about the Raspberry Pi is just with one command line, or download and install packages all by itself. Let's load CyberDuck and 
put in simply the IP address on my local network of the Raspberry Pi. Username is Pi, and the password, of course, is <laughs> Raspberry. And we can just start transferring ROMs to the appropriate folders. I'm going to try a few systems on this because I actually want this to be a full RetroPie device. And overgo the Apple IIe ROMs and Commodore 64 ROMs and lots of other games too. Of course, all games that I own in real life. <clears throat> well, speeding forward now, I've got this original Apple IIe joystick. This was the one that we used back in the day playing Blitzkrieg. And you see there the 9-pin connector. That goes into our USB Teensy Arduino adapter. And all we do is hold down the buttons on the joystick when prompted, and it will assign them to each command. And any we don't need, we can just skip. But I wanted to be able to play all the games on this RetroPie, so we need a few more buttons. And I was able to find these. Look, even the color of the surround matches the Apple IIe keys. Now I'm wondering if someone in the future can use this space for a logo, perhaps based on the original Joystick IIe logo here. Hmm, I wonder who could do that. Stay tuned. And it goes into the uh, appropriately labeled joystick ports. And we do the same thing again. Just map all those keys and buttons. That was actual speed. And the same with gamepad number two. Well, while we're talking about cutlery and eating utensils, I mean joysticks and keyboards, let's test that keyboard. It works first time, only I couldn't find the exclamation key. Uh, so it's, hello computer cooks. <laughs> Quick reboot. And look, Linapple is ready to go. <laughs> and it gives you this lovely logo. We can select it using the Apple keyboard. Let's go to the master Apple Basic disk. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. It just works. It really is an apple pie now. Yeah, excuse my typing. I'm not used to this keyboard after 30 years. Very complicated programming here by Perifractic. Can't even type run correctly. Like, subscribe, and support. <laughs> now, as always on Retro Recipes, I want to take things one step further. I want to hook up the tinny monophonic Apple IIe speaker via this original wire coming off it to the Raspberry Pi itself. Now, the Pi does have a 3.5 millimeter jack, but it does cause some processing issues, so I'm going to be using a dedicated external USB device. And that USB device has a 3.5mm jack. And it occurred to me if I just use a standard headphone cable and wire it into the Apple IIe speaker wires, it should work. Now because I'm not by my soldering station, I did this the old-fashioned way, using some twisting fingers and a good old-fashioned pair of scissors. And here's that USB to 3.5 millimeter jack audio device. Fully compatible with the Raspberry Pi and Linux. So in goes the cable that I hooks up to the original speaker. And then that USB goes into our powered hub. And 
then we actually need to tell the Raspberry Pi to use the USB instead. So by issuing this command, you can see there the C Media Electronics Inc. That tells me that it's recognized the device. And then by typing this, we can actually see what the reference numbers are for each device. So we want number one, USB. So all we do is write a little program that tells the Raspberry Pi to use unit one instead of unit zero as the default. Fingers crossed, here we go. Okay, it's working. It's kind of quiet though. So we can actually go into the mixer option and just bump up the volume. What the heck, let's go for it. is just too cool. Oops, it's been a while. Wow, kind of can't believe that works. Well, let's make sure that our other systems are up and running as well. Hmm. That brings back memories. Now, although I could get to the load screens of most of these, uh, I couldn't actually get some of the games to work. I looked into it and I'll need to do a bit more Jet Set willy tweaking in the config files and the ROM files. So we'll have to say goodbye to Jet Set Willy and let Willy go. So we'll reminisce just for a second with these startup screens and try the most important system of all, the Super Nintendo and Super Mario World. There you go, Super Mario World running on an Apple IIe through the original speaker. But I don't know about you, that display looks a bit too good. So, it's Retro Recipes, Retro with a Twist. I'm going to push things one step further and get an original green screen monitor working, just like I used to have it back in the day. And that's why I chose the Model B. I just love the fact that it has a dedicated composite out. So we can just run a composite cable straight from it into the composite in of the monitor. And then all we need to do is for Linapple, tell it to use a different video output. And we scroll down and we'll find the SDTV NTSC 4x3. There it is. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. I am now experiencing the Apple IIe just as I used to when I was, I think, eight years old. There's not much more we can do inside there. So let's put a lid on this project and just stare at the biggest Raspberry Pi case you've ever seen in your life. And play some of those games. This one's for you, mum. This one's for you, Mum. Yay! <laughs> and this is the program I mentioned in the intro. 
it was called an introduction to Apple IIe. And it explained, you know, kind of how the keyboard worked. The pressing enter would allow you to submit a command or a function. And how to use backspace, etc. Oh, I know this one. My name. Well, I'm going to use this, and I'll tell you why. I had a little idea from my memories of this. We want to get rid of the S. Or we'll become clear. <laughs> ah, I've been wanting to do that for about three months. Hmm, sorry about that. Love it. Hmm, number nine, chicken fried steak. American cuisine is so tasty. <clears throat> and then this menu would turn into some games and other options you could play. I don't remember it being this hard. Happy dogs. And it looks pretty good in colour too. Well, that was Mum, now in honour of my dad. I love that kind of wireframe, almost vector graphic effect. And the game's pretty simple. You just have to line up your bullets correctly to shoot down these planes. Take that, and that, and that. Well, that was the best thing of all, that sound effect. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Too late. Yes! <laughs> On the rebound. Oh, my dad loved this. You know, those were really special times, coming home with that floppy disk putting it in the Apple II and him telling me a couple of war stories while we played this. You know, he used to be a radio operator after the war. He'd have loved to see this. Hey, it's the internet. Maybe he still can somewhere. Well, there it is. But I'm not sure we've reached its full potential. I think there's still room to grow. So I'm going to launch what I call Perifractics Think Different Challenge. What I'm going to do is nominate Jan Peter, not for an Oscar for his recent acting performance where he took a phone call from me in that Commodore 128 video, but for this challenge. And what I'm going to do is give this to Jan. I'll ship it to him. He doesn't have to come and pick it up from America. Uh, when it gets to him, he can say, Hi, it's Jan Bieter. And then he can set to work on taking this to the next level. We'll leave that up to Jan. The idea is then he takes it to the next step and then nominates maybe one or maybe two more retro YouTube channels for the Think Different Challenge. We'll each sign the case in true Commodore style. And when it's reached its full potential, we're going to give it away. Forget about Raspberry Pis. This is the Raspberry Prize Apple. Well, there it is. Ah, Jan Bieter, I nominate you officially. What do you say? Oh, hello, Perry Frectic. Hello, Retro Cooks. I love the apples, and I'm going to try to bring this to another level. Don't know how exactly yet, but. I'm gonna figure it out. I think this is gonna be fun. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much, mate. There it is. It's a date. Well, it's an apple. I mean, any kind of fruit, really. Make a nice pie. Date, raspberry and apple pie. 
Well, that's all I've got time for. Please like, subscribe, make sure you click the bell to get notified of new videos, leave a comment below and check out my Patreon. Until next time, for the Think Different Challenge, I'll say cheerio.